In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve ideal gas law problems, but in a typical physics course as opposed to a chemistry course. So let's consider this problem. We have a 0.1 cubic meter container, and the pressure inside this container is 85 kilopascals at 300 Kelvin. How many moles of gas are in this container? Now the formula that we need to use is PV is equal to nRT. Now in chemistry, the pressure is typically in units of ATM, but in physics it's going to be pascals or newtons per square meter. Now in chemistry, the R value is 0 0.08206 liters times ATM per mole per Kelvin. So if you're going to use this R value, the volume has to be in liters and the pressure has to be in ATM. So you can still get the right answer, but you need to use these units for volume and pressure. Now let's say if you decide to use this particular R value instead, which is what we're going to use in this video. The pressure has to be in pascals, and the volume has to be in cubic meters. One pascal is one newton per square meter, so keep that in mind. Now let's plug in the data into this equation. We have a pressure of 85 kilopascals. You need to know that one kilopascal is 1,000 pascals. So the pressure is 85,000 pascals, or 85,000 newtons per square meter. The volume is 0.1 cubic meters. And R is 8.3145, and the temperature is 300 Kelvin. So let's multiply 85,000 by 0.1. So that's going to be 8,500 and newtons times meters. N is the number of moles, and then 8.3145 times 300. That's going to be 2,494.35. So N is going to be 8,500 divided by 2,494.35. And so there's 3.4 moles of gas in this container. Number two, what is the volume in cubic meters of 5 moles of gas at STP? STP stands for standard temperature and pressure. The standard temperature is 0 degrees Celsius, which is equivalent to 273 Kelvin. And the standard pressure is 1 atm which in physics, that's 101.3 kilopascals. Now you need to know that one mole of gas occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. So in this problem, we have five moles of gas. So we could convert that to the volume in liters. So one mole per 22.4 liters. Now all we need to do at this point is convert liters into cubic meters. Now, it helps if you know that there's a thousand liters per one cubic meter. And I'll prove this conversion shortly. But for now, let's get the answer. So we need to put the number of liters on the bottom. So it's going to be 5 times 22.4, which is 112 liters, divided by a thousand. And so the volume is 0.112 cubic meters. So this is the answer to the problem. That's the volume in cubic meters of 5 moles of gas. Now let's show that 1,000 liters is equal to a cubic meter. You need to know that 1 milliliter has the same volume as a cubic centimeter. So with this information, we're going to prove this conversion. So let's start with 1 cubic meter. Let's show that this is equal to 1,000 liters. Now we need to convert cubic meters into cubic centimeters. One meter is equal to 100 centimeters. Now we need to raise this to the third power because we have cubic meters. Now one cubic centimeter is equal to one milliliter. And there's a thousand milliliters per single liter. So cubic meters cancel. Cubic centimeters cancels as well and we can cancel the number of milliliters. 
So the operation is going to be 100 raised to the third power divided by 1,000. So 100 to the third power, that's 100 times 100 times 100 for a total of three times. And if you divide it by 1,000, this will give you 1,000 liters. So make sure you know this conversion. 1,000 liters is equal to one cubic meter. It's very useful if you're dealing with ideal gas law problems in physics. Now let's move on to number three. A 20 liter container has a pressure of 130 kilopascals at 300 Kelvin. How many molecules of gas are in this container? Now we need to derive a different form of the ideal gas law equation. So we're going to start with this form. Now it's important to understand that N, the number of moles, is the ratio between the number of molecules divided by Avogadro's number. So N has the unit molecules. N sub A is the number of molecules per mole. So Avogadro's number tells us that one mole of gas has 6 times 10 to the 23 molecules. And N is in moles. So we can see how the unit molecules will cancel, giving us the unit moles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace N with N over NA. So we now have PV is equal to N over NA times RT. Now what I'm going to do is divide R by NA. So R over NA will give us something known as Boltzmann's constant. So R is 8.3145 joules divided by moles per Kelvin. And Avogadro's number, that's 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules per mole. So we could cancel the unit moles. And so it's going to be 8.3145 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So the value of Boltzmann's constant, it's 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23 joules per Kelvin and technically per molecule. So now, we have this equation, PV is equal to N times KT. So let's go ahead and use that formula to calculate the number of molecules in this container. So we need the pressure in Pascals. So P is 130,000 Pascals. Keep in mind, 1 kilopascal is 1,000 Pascals. Now the volume, we need to convert it to cubic meters. Now we know that one cubic meter is equal to a thousand liters. So it's going to be 20 divided by a thousand, which is 0 0.02 cubic meters. So let's write that in for V. And then capital N is the number of molecules, which we're looking for, times Boltzmann's constant. 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 and the temperature is 300 Kelvin. So 130,000 times 0 0.02 that's going to be 2600 and then 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 multiplied by 300 that's 4.14 times 10 to the minus 21. And so N, the number of molecules, is 2600 divided by 4.14 times 10 to the minus 21. And so that's going to be 6.28 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And so this is the answer.